Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Maria Doyle Kennedy about Kin, which is premiering September 9th on AMC Plus. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. Hi, how are you? I'm great. I am great. Um, this show is incredible. I'm so excited for everyone to have the chance to see it. Um, first thing that kind of pops comes to mind is the acting is next level. What was it like working with this cast for this show, Maria? Well, thanks very much. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're really great. I had worked <laughs> with a few people before. Aidan Gillen is, um, he, we have worked together a few times now. We've played, we're brother and sister in the show. We've yep. played brother and sister before on Queer as Folk and mm-hmm. he played my husband Sing in Street. Sing Street. Yeah. yeah, and we're friends, you know, we know each other. So it's, and I just know how brilliant he is. And uh, also uh, we kind of have a little bit of shorthand, I guess, because we know each other and I, I would really trust him. Kieran Hines, who plays our, the head of the other crime family, Eamon Cunningham. We also work together. We yeah. played husband and wife in a drama. So, um. I, I knew them very well and all of the younger well they're just fantastic Sam and Emmett and Claire they're they're just brilliant it's just I love working with people who are better than me <laughs> because <laughs> you just have to well you just have to up your game don't you it's, so there was um, familiarity with with some of the people before which is great yeah. but it's just fantastic um what was this project like compared to others you worked on on the past because for people that like you said you've worked on a lot of projects before with Ian but there's also um a lot of other projects Orphan Black the Tudors how would this one compare to other projects well I suppose one of the biggest um differences for me was this was the first job that I did during the pandemic yeah um, it was filmed in Ireland in Dublin where I'm from and where mm. I live with my family so that made it very um easy it was i didn't have to go away or quarantine or leave my family behind you know that was good but it was it was a strange experience to begin with because you know we were masked all the time except when we were actually shooting and that's so such a strange way to work because you know you give so many cues and clues with your face and the you know it's such a bigger part of the intention of what you're doing that that words don't quite convey sometimes but everybody also was so happy to be working we were just like if this is what it takes we're gonna wear the masks of course 100 percent. we were tested a lot as well and so that was good and made you kind of reassured in, in terms of your own family but that was a, the instantly as you asked me that question that was like just a a whole adjustment of a way of working and being around people that we that we had to do in the other ways i mean um uh, my character has the best character name that I've ever had. She's called <laughs> Birdie. <laughs> Birdie Goggins. And I love that name so much. I just a very like, powerful I character. People are going to see a very powerful character. <laughs> yeah, she's not to be messed with, is she, Birdie? Yeah. Um, also, I had a lot of fun with her because uh, although her kind of, her sort of arc or her, the colour of her character was written on the page, it was really left to me to say, who she would be and what she would look like. And the creator, the writer and the director were really open about that. And they really um, wanted me to to put some, you know, get her up, get legs on her kind of. And so the costume designer and I, oh my God, we had so much fun, which you'll see obviously, but she's kind of stuck in 1994, Birdie. She kind of really never moved past that. And she, um, she's not married, she's a widow. And she doesn't have a partner at the moment. She doesn't have any children of her own. And she does have a good bit of money. So she, yep. we really wondered about this person who you would look at and just go, look at all that sort of time and intention in her style and probably a bit of money to throw at it. And how could it all go so wrong? She just looks kind of slightly off all the time. I just, I love her so much. I'm just crazy. A hundred percent. And people are going to be able to see Ken. It premieres on AMC plus. They're going to be able to see it September 9th. And when they see it, they're going to see, they're going to be introduced to the Kinslow as a family. Now I'm just curious about this. Obviously we're not going to go into spoilers, but people are going to see that in the show, 
the fa- there are some family members of the Kinslas make very rash, bad decisions. And it kind of just leads to one after another after another. When you were reading the script and you were preparing, was that something that came to mind in terms of kind of themes or major things about this show? Because that's basically like it's about a family, a crime family in Ireland, but it's also about bad decisions. Yeah. I, I did think about that a lot, actually, and about the way that, you know, they navigate the world in a particular way, this family, because they do make their money from crime. Yeah. Um, but still, they they have all the regular things that regular families have. You know, people who get on, people who don't get on, lines that were crossed, people who are defensive, people who are aggressive. You know, there's all that kind of knitting together of a family. But then just, just the way that just like one five minutes of the day can change the world so entirely for everybody. It, it it really did make me think a lot about actions and about yeah. how a very small step can lead to a huge ramification for for everybody. That's what yeah. I that was the takeaway for me. It just seemed and it just seemed like they never stopped. It's like one bad decision just led to like other bad decisions that don't necessarily have to do with that bad decision. It's just kind of a whole balloon that's about well, the don't pop. You, don't you know somebody like that though? Aren't you know there are people who just like never really examine their behavior and they never really they don't ever plan a lot of stuff either. They're just constantly reacting to yeah. things. And that element, yeah. that element yeah. That that element is, is so them true. Just putting out fires all the time because they they just they never consider their behavior or the impact it will have. They just behave. They're just like all about their immediate, no impulse control whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, I know people like that, so. And they're saying this is the golden age of television. Do you agree that one of the reasons why it's a golden age of television is because the scripts and the content out there is so kind of like what we were talking about, so real, like, like, like a lot of it is real. Like this is about like, there's a relatability to things, about the bad decisions and everything we were talking about. I think it's real and I also think it's really clever. Yeah. I think that the reason television is going so far now is because the writers are um, not treating the audience as if they're idiots. They know that people are really able and want and need complicated stories because people and life are complicated yeah. and they're sometimes contradictory. And they're, you know, it's not, people are never one note. They don't just follow this line of, you know, I'm the good guy or I'm the bad guy. People, like you say, they make bad decisions or they end up in situations which are not the best for them. Or they put other people into bad situations without realizing it even sometimes. So, like, life is messy. Yep. And, uh, and we all know that. Yep. So I think that the writers are just recognizing the intelligence of their audience and the audience are responding to that and go, you're right. Those people, you know, I understand that. And more and more just interesting stuff is 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 on our screens now, isn't it? From every kind of genre that you'd want, yeah. any kind of, it can be a fantasy or an escape or whatever, or just a reflection on your life. I, I think it's fantastic. Absolutely. And one quick question before we wrap up. People are going to get get a chance to see the show on AMC+. Plus. When they get a chance to see it, Maria, what are you hoping they get out of it takeaway-wise? We kind of have talked a little bit about what to expect a little bit without going into the big spoilers, but what do you hope they get from it takeaway-wise when they get to watch it on AMC+. Plus? Oh, gosh, I don't really know. I don't really know because I think people will watch it for different things. Mm-hmm. Some people will watch it for, like, Birdie's awful clothes. I'm so- <laughs> Some people will watch it for, but I think most people understand uh, a complicated family dynamic. And I think that's something that will really, you know, will really kind of trigger people in a good way, I think. But I'm hoping that I'm hoping that they're just going to be interested enough in it to want to watch more. For me, it was like when I was reading the scripts, it was one of those page turners. I just like I just couldn't wait to find out what the next bit and the next bit and the next bit was. So. That's how I hope people will feel after they watch it. Absolutely. Yeah. Maria, thank you so much for coming on Pop Alternative, the chat about Ken. I really appreciate it. Not at all, Pete. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. So it's going to be premiering on September 9th on AMC Plus, And then every week after that, an episode will be dropping. And where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? 
Oh God, I'm I'm just sometimes there all the time and sometimes not at all. But I do. Um, Maria Doyle Kennedy, you'll find me on on uh, Instagram, yeah, mm -hmm. or Twitter. I'm I'm there, Maria. Yeah, you'll find me. Amazing. What's the, what's the <laughs> pop? You're asking. You're yeah. sweet. <laughs> no problem. This has been Pop Turn at youtubecom slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. You're going to be able to catch Maria Doyle Kennedy as Birdie in Ken premiering September 9th on AMC Plus. Until next time, this is Maria Doyle Kennedy and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.